According to a recent study, American electric car owners, as in those people living in the United States, are saving more money on vehicle operating costs than any other group of people anywhere in the world. And there is a reason for this. There's a lot of Americans that are anti-electric cars. It is true. There's a lot of YouTube channel stuff around trying to use fake information to discredit EVs. However, all of that stuff is so incredibly insane when you actually look at the facts. And the facts are electric cars, even in winter in the United States, save you insane amounts of money. I mean, boatloads. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Great to have you. Welcome back, everyone else. Thank you for tuning in. If you want to know what I'm up to here, I'm in, actually in Thailand because my wife is undergoing cancer treatments. Now, the doctors here in Australia said she had stage four cancer. Apparently, they say it's incurable. Here in Thailand, there's an amazing clinic. It's a bit expensive, but um, it's amazing. However, we're able to afford quite a few weeks of going to that clinic thanks to you guys. So thank you so much. The GoFundMe campaign has been an incredible success. Really, really have to say, I owe you guys an enormous debt of gratitude. I'll put a link in the description below to the campaign. You can see what I'm talking about and you can see just how generous so many of you have been. Thank you so much. In winter, electric vehicles do lose some range. I mean, for example, if you go hiking with your mobile phone, you'll see that the performance of the battery is not as good as what it is. In fact, nowhere near as good as what it is in normal conditions when it's cold. For example, if you go, say, up a mountain, you hike up a mountain, you'll see it's, the performance can be absolutely terrible. Now, fortunately, most EVs, except for, say, EVs like the Nissan Leaf, have really good thermal management, meaning they still perform pretty well in winter. I mean, not as good as they do in other months of the year, summer, etc., but still pretty good, much better than a mobile phone battery. That said, you still will lose some range. However, I did see a recent study testing all electric cars during winter. It was a very interesting study. And not all, I, well, I mean, it tested about 25 different electric cars. Mercedes, their EVs suffered the most from battery degradation during winter, which is surprising to me. The vehicles that performed the best during winter were Tesla vehicles. It was just that simple. Almost every brand was in the test. It gives you a good idea of the vehicles that will perform better. That test was not done in the United States. That test was done in... Actually, that test supported some other data from another test which was done in Denmark in the winter as well. There's been a few winter range tests and generally Tesla vehicles have been performing the best. So I can't make up that information to try and look like I'm a pro Tesla fan. I'm just telling you the fact what it is. So... A lot of people are saying, well, because EV batteries perform badly in winter, well, not as well in winter, therefore having an EV doesn't make sense. You're not going to save money. It's just a pointless joke and you're not going to save the planet and why bother getting one? It's, it's ridiculous. And yeah, they say that still. However, Upshift, a company that provides performance marketing services, made a study to compare the running costs of electric and combustion powered cars during winter. The most popular electric vehicle and the most popular combustion powered cars in each country were used for this study. Now, the thing is, a lot of people who are saying that are very anti EV, they like to think that gasoline powered cars or combustion engine cars, diesel cars, they perform exactly the same in winter as they do in summer and every other month of the year, which is clearly not true. I mean, have a listen to your car, how it goes when it's 40 degrees Celsius or whatever that is in Fahrenheit. Sorry, I don't know Americans. Yeah, they don't like it. Have a look at how your car does at high altitude. Yeah, they don't like it. They use a lot more fuel because there's less oxygen in the air. So there's definitely some downsides that the anti-EV brigade won't tell you about or won't even acknowledge exist in their arguments. However, Upshift said EV owners in the United States save the most compared to electric car owners in other countries. This is due to lower electricity costs which mean that charging costs are only $79 per month on average. And that's far lower than the average cost of $273 a month. That's across the United States. That's all of it. That's not like anecdotal crap that the anti-EV brigade will give you. They'll say, oh, you know, my local gas station, yeah, the prices are this, so therefore this, this means everything. It's nonsense, of course. This study was done across a broad range of states in the United States. 
gives you a good idea. The average cost, $79 per month. That's if you don't have your own solar panels, right? Solar panels do still work in winter. That's if you don't have your own solar, $79 a month for EVs. $273 per month if you've got a gas-powered vehicle or petrol-powered, diesel-powered, whatever you want to call it. Overall, US EV owners see savings of $194 US dollars per month by driving an EV. That's if they don't have solar. You got solar, good chance you'll save a lot more than that. If not, well, not pay anything. China is the world's largest EV market and electric cars are dominating the market in China. The cost of charging electric vehicles in China during winter is extremely low. Drivers pay an average of one cent per mile. One cent per mile. You can really see why Chinese buyers are going, yeah, yeah, we want an EV. Now I went to China, stayed there for a couple of months, traveled around China a couple of, for a couple of months around 13 years ago. Electric mopeds everywhere. Now the key reason for that is one cent per mile, even in winter. That's just unbelievable. Now, did you know that in China, there's actually enough solar and wind installed to power every single household in the entire country? Nearly 1.4 billion people in the country, right? They've got enough solar and wind. But of course, there's not enough solar and wind to power all the industry there. Now, getting back to the issue here, this equates to a monthly cost in China of $6.60. $6.60 to run your EV, right? You're looking at maybe $100 a year. That's insane. And that's lower than the cost of running your EV in the United States if you don't have solar. That makes China the country with the cheapest EV running cost during winter. Now, those costs seem too good to be true, but I looked it up and the facts seem to support it. The opposite is true for some places in Europe, said the study. Upshift said that Germany is the only country where running an EV in winter costs more than fueling a traditional internal combustion vehicle. Now, I don't believe that's correct, but that's what Upshift said. On average, EV owners in Germany pay $20 more per month than those who drive internal combustion engine cars during the winter months. Belgium follows Germany's trend as the research found that monthly running costs for EVs in winter in the country exceed $100 with an average of $100.75 per month. But of course, like I said, that's for people who don't have any solar. Yes, solar does work when it's cloudy. I've had this discussion with people before. They've said, no, 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 solar doesn't work when it's cloudy. They end up getting solar panels and they go, oh, yeah, it does. It does work. So the EVs tested in the UK, it was the Tesla Model Y versus the Nissan Qashqai, which is obviously the internal combustion engine vehicle they compared it to. Tesla Model Y is a much bigger car than the Nissan Qashqai. Not really a fair comparison, but anyhow, Switzerland or Swiss Tesla Model Y versus the Toyota Yaris. Once again, not a fair comparison. The Model Y is nearly twice the size of a Toyota Yaris. What about South Korea? Tesla Model 3 versus the Hyundai Potter. Now that's a really weird one because the Hyundai Potter is actually a truck. I don't understand what happened there. Belgium, Tesla Model 3 versus Citroen C3. Model 3 is a much bigger car. Then the Citroen C3. What about the Netherlands? They compared the Tesla Model 3 versus the Peugeot 208. Tesla Model 3, a much bigger car than the Peugeot 208, significantly bigger. What about Iceland? Tesla Model 3 was compared to the Dacia Duster. Now, even though the Dacia Duster is kind of a small SUV, they're similar in size to the Duster and the Tesla Model 3 overall. Model 3 is slightly longer. In Denmark, the Tesla Model 3 was compared to the Dacia Duster as well. And then in Portugal, the Tesla Model 3 was compared to the Dacia Sandero. Obviously, the Model 3 is a bigger car than the Sandero. On average, for most of this study, the Tesla vehicles compared were, were the ones compared because they're the best-selling EVs in most of the countries. And the Tesla vehicles were bigger in 9.5 times out of 10 versus the comparable gas vehicle tested. So it's not really a fair study. In fact, it actually benefits the gasoline cars. It benefits the fuel cars simply because the cars that they compared them to were smaller. Anyhow, it shows you that, yeah, you will save money running an EV in winter in almost every country in the world. In fact, in most countries, you'll save a huge amount of money. In the United States, you'll save the most. So there's some facts for you. Hope you enjoyed that video, and I'll see you again on the next one. Bye-bye.